Hi everyone, welcome back to How We Rose Cook. If it's your first time here, my name is Marceline. Welcome and I'm happy to have you. Welcome back. Today we're going to be vlogging our Sunday evening dinner. And shout out to Brittany Scott for your rice and peas request and for all the persons who have messaged me. And I also made some roasted pork which will be posted in a separate video. So this was Saturday night, I prepped my coconut and sometimes it's very hard to find good coconut. So whenever I find it, I just freeze them. And sometimes if I really don't have any, I will just go ahead and use a canned coconut milk. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some warm water to my blender and blend my coconut, strain it off. And I just put it in the fridge until the next day. However, it will sleep up just a little bit, but once you add it to the boiling water, everything will just dissolve. And now I'm going to go ahead and wash my peas. I'm using some small red beans. I'm going to go ahead, rinse it, and I'm going to soak them overnight. So we just leave the peas to soak overnight, making it easier to cook the next day. I just add some salt. And once my water starts to boil, I just add a little bit of water and that will help to sink the peas and make them cook faster. Another option is to pressure the peas. You can use an instant pot if you have one and this will take about five minutes in the instant pot. Anything over five minutes, your peas will become too mushy. For the persons who are making rice and peas for the first time, I did say I was going to go ahead and do a measurement for you, but I totally forgot. It's not a part of my culture to measure. You just know the amount that you need and you just go ahead and cook it. That's just how we do it. And I am extremely sorry that I didn't measure. But if you want to stay on the safe side, you can use the 2 to 1 ratio when you're making the rice. So every cup of rice, you add 2 cups of liquid. So once my piece is cooked, I go ahead and add my coconut milk. Sometimes I add coconut milk from the beginning. I really have different way of cooking when I'm cooking. And... This is just one of them. So once it's cooked, I go ahead, add the coconut milk and I season with some pimento leaves or if you have crushed pimento seeds, you can add that as well. Scotch bonnet pepper, thyme, scallion. I usually use a green pepper, but I don't have any. So I just went ahead and used one of the regular ripe habanero. So I'm adding a tablespoon of butter. I also added some all-purpose seasoning. And if you can taste it and if it needs to be adjusted, you can add a little salt. All right. So make sure you taste your liquid first before adding your rice. So we're going to start to combine with the rice and the peas. And we're going to cover this. Once it starts to boil, I normally just turn the stove down to low and allow it to cook. Once all my liquid is dried out, I can... Just go ahead, allow the rice to continue steaming on its own without adding any further liquid. And then remove all your pepper, scallion. And that's it. That's all there is to making a delicious pot of rice and peas. And I hope this video helps. Now my chicken was also prepped from Saturday night. I cut up a whole chicken and rinsed with vinegar and lime. And I just went ahead and pat dry. Now we're going to combine all our seasoning. So we're going to combine these spices. I have some anato. This will add color. And I have some sazan as well. If you don't want to use sazan, anato alone will be fine. I have black pepper, some Tony's Creole seasoning, Tone's Cajun seasoning, paprika, black pepper, and garlic powder. I don't add salt because the Tone's Cajun seasoning and the Creole all-purpose seasoning has salt in it. So I don't add any salt. I'm going to sprinkle on a little on the chicken, making sure that each piece of the chicken is properly coated with some of this seasoning. All right. And then we're going to put the remaining seasoning in the fridge for the next day. So everything is done and we're going to put them in a container cover and add it to the refrigerator until the next day. The next day, I just go ahead, add my remaining spices and seasoning into the flour and we're going to combine if you want a crispy chicken you can go ahead and add some cornstarch and baking powder to your flour another option is to add egg you can check my previous fried chicken videos to see that method and another method that i do sometimes occasionally is take a little bit of this flour mixture and dissolve with some water making a batter and then we can dip it in the batter and then in the dry flour either way your chicken will come out crispy and nice 
So now I'm making sure that every part of my chicken is properly coated with this flour mixture. Then I just lay them on a plate before going over to the stove. You want to make sure that you shake off that excess flour so that it doesn't burn in the bottom of your pot. Now this next step is quite optional. I add some scotch bonnet pepper and onion and sometimes I add garlic as well in the oil. This adds some flavor and I'm going to go ahead and add my chicken. And when you add your chicken, make sure that you don't move them right away because you want that flour to stay on. Let them continue frying and if you are deep frying as I am doing right now, they will sometimes turn over or when they are done, they will float to the top. Please bear in mind that your legs and your thighs will take a longer time to cook. I really don't go by timing when I'm making my chicken. I always just know when they're done. But if you want to go by timing, the wings and the breast area will be done in 15 minutes. Especially if it cuts in small pieces like these, they will be done in 15 minutes. And for legs and thighs, when you deep frying, those will take 20 to 25 minutes. So I hope those, those little tips help for the persons who requested the fried chicken. Alright, so this is my last set that I'm removing right now and then we're going to go ahead and make some gravy. So the flour that falls from the chicken when frying settles in the bottom, you want to use a little of that with your gravy. It adds a nice flavor with the chicken oil as well as it helps to thicken your gravy. I'm going ahead and sauteing some onion, scallion, scotch bonnet pepper and also tomato and bell peppers. And I'm just adding some water after sauteing, some ketchup, a little meat sauce, or you can use any sauce that you want to add flavor to your gravy. Now I'm adding just a little honey, about a teaspoon, which is optional, and just a little caramel or browning, whichever one. And we're going to go ahead and just allow this to cook down and cover it until it thickens, just like this. Alright, and that's basically it for this Sunday. And I did make some pot roasted pork for hubby, which I will post in a separate video. So stay tuned for that one as well. Alright, thank you for your request. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your love and your support. My page and my channel is nothing without you guys and I really appreciate you. Enjoy the rest of your week.